Dear students, today in tissue level of organization part 2, we are going to talk about the connective tissue. Connective tissue can be loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue or specialized connective tissue. Connective tissue develops from the mesoderm and is widely distributed in the body. There are three main classes namely loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue and specialized connective tissue. Major functions of connective tissues are binding, support, protection, insulation and transportation. All connective tissues consist of three main components namely fibers, ground substance and cells. The fibers of connective tissue provide support. Three types of fibers are found in the connective tissue matrix. They are collagen, elastic and reticular fibers. Here you can see the classification of the connective tissues which is loose connective tissue which can be areolar tissue, adipose tissue or reticular tissue. Dense connective tissues which can be dense regular, dense irregular and elastic tissue. The specialized connective tissues which can be cartilage, bone or blood. Loose connective tissues, the tissue cells and fibers are loosely arranged in a semi-fluid ground substances. For example, the areolar connective tissue beneath the skin acts as a support framework for the epithelium and acts as a reservoir of water and salts for the surrounding body tissues, hence aptly called tissue fluid. Areolar connective tissue contains fibroblasts, macrophages and mast cells. Here in this image below of the areolar tissue, you can see the fibers which are made up of collagen and the cells like the macrophages, fibroblasts and the mast cells. Adipose tissue is similar to areolar tissue in structure and function and located beneath the skin. Adipose sites commonly called adipose or fat cells predominate and account for 90% of this tissue mass. The cells of this tissue store fat and the excess nutrients which are not utilized immediately are converted to fats and are stored in this tissue. On the right side image you can see the tissue which is made up of adipocytes which contain the fat stored. It has a nucleus in the periphery and a peripheral rim of cytoplasm. Adipose tissue is richly vascularized indicating its high metabolic activity while fasting. These cells maintain life by producing and supplying energy as fuel. Adipose tissues are also found in subcutaneous tissues surrounding the kidneys, eyeball, heart etc. The right side image you can see an enlarged adipocyte cell which has a fat storage area and the cytoplasm is pushed towards the periphery near the plasma membrane and it has a nucleus in the periphery. Adipose tissue is called white fat or white adipose tissue. The adipose tissue which contains abundant mitochondria is called brown fat or brown adipose tissue. White fat stores nutrients whereas brown fat is used to heat the bloodstream to warm the body. Brown fat produces heat by non-shivering thermogenesis in neonates. In the image on the right side you can see the white fat cell and the right side you can see the brown fat cell which is made up of large number of mitochondria. What type of connective tissue is damaged when one cuts on his index finger accidentally? The areolar connective tissue is damaged when the finger is cut. The stored lipids are in the form of adipose tissue. Are they colored? Why? The lipids stored in the adipose are colored. They are yellow color because the lipids comes from fats and oil and gets stored in the adipose tissue. Now let us move on to the reticular connective tissue. Reticular connective tissue resembles areolar connective tissue but the matrix is filled with fibroblasts called reticular cells. It forms an internal framework which is called the stroma and supports the blood cells largely the lymphocytes in the lymph nodes spleen and bone marrow. Here in the image you can see the cut section of the spleen which shows the reticular connective tissue which has the reticular cells and the reticular fibers having the nucleus. Dense connective tissues, fibers and fibroblasts are compactly packed in dense connective tissues. Orientation of fibers show a regular or an irregular pattern and is called dense regular and dense irregular tissues. Dense regular connective tissues primarily contain collagen fibers in rows between many parallel bundles of tissues and a few elastic fibers. The major cell type is fibroblast. It attaches muscles 
and bones and withstands the great tensile strain. When pulling forces are applied in one direction, this connective tissue is present in tendons that attach skeletal muscles to the bones and ligaments attach one bone to another. Dense irregular connective tissues have bundles of thick collagen fibers and fibroblasts which are arranged irregularly. The major cell type is the fibroblast. It is able to withstand tension exerted in many directions and provide structural strength. Some elastic fibers are also present. It is found in the skin as the leathery dermis and forms the fibrous capsules of organs such as kidneys, bones, cartilages, muscles, nerves and joints. Here in this image you can see the regular dense connective tissue which has the collagen fibers arranged in a regular fashion with fibroblast cells containing the nuclei. Below you can see the irregular dense connective tissue which has irregular pattern of the collagen fibers arrangement and the fibroblast with the nuclei. Elastic connective tissue contains high proportion of elastic fibers. It allows recoil of the tissues falling stretching. It maintains the pulsatile flow of blood through the arteries and the passive recoil of lungs following inspiration. It is found in the walls of large arteries, ligaments associated with the vertebral column and within the walls of the bronchial tubes. Here in this image you can see a blood vessel having the tunica intima which is made up of the endothelial cells and the elastic fibers which are in a wavy pattern. They have fibroblasts embedded in between them. Specialized connective tissues are classified as cartilage, bones and blood. The intercellular material of the cartilage is solid and pliable and resist compression. Cells of this tissue called the chondrocytes are enclosed in a small cavities within the matrix secreted by them called lacunae. Most of the cartilages in vertebrate embryos are replaced by bones in adults. Cartilage is present in the tip of the nose, outer ear joints, ear pinna, between adjacent bones of the vertebral column, limbs and hands in the adults. The cartilage can be a hyaline cartilage where the chondrocytes are present in the lacunae with more matrix. The fibrocartilage where the fibrous tissue is in excess and the chondrocytes are present in the lacunae and the collagen fibers are present in the matrix. Elastic cartilage which is made up of large number of elastic fibers with chondrocytes in the lacunae. Bones have a hard and non-playable ground substance rich in calcium salts and collagen fibers which gives strength to the bones. It is the main tissue that provides structural framework of the body. Bones support and protect softer tissues and organs. Here in this image on the right side of the bone you can see it has an outer compact bone and an inner trabeculae of spongy bone. In the bone, you can see a central Havasian canal surrounded by lamellae. And this portion, the Havasian canal and the lamellae together is called the osteon. The bone cells called the osteocytes are present in the spaces called lacunae. Limb bones such as the long bones of the legs serve weight bearing functions. They also interact with the skeletal muscles attached to them to bring about movements. The bone marrow in some bones is the site of production of blood cells. On the right side, the cut section of the bone, you can see the central Havasinal canal surrounded by lamellae and in the matrix, there are lacunae which has the osteocytes. Blood is the fluid connective tissue containing plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. It functions as the transparent medium for the cardiovascular system, carrying nutrients, waste, respiratory gases throughout the body. Below image, you can see the composition of the blood made up of plasma about 55% and the formed elements about 45%. The formed elements are platelets which occupy 0.01%, the red blood cells which occupy about 41%, the white blood cells which occupy about 4% which are made up of lymphocytes, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes and neutrophils. Here you can see the sum up of the specialized connective tissue. On the left side above is the cartilage which has the cartilaginous fibers and the lacunae having the chondrocytes. On the right side you can see the lacunae having the osteocytes and the compact bone with the lamellae around the Havasian canal. Below you can see the fluid connective tissue which is made up of plasma, RBCs, platelets and WBCs. 
important connective tissue disorders ehlers danlos syndrome defect in the synthesis of collagen in the joints heart valves walls and arterial walls the image on the right side above where the skin is stretchable stickler syndrome affects the collagen and results in facial abnormalities the image on the right side in the middle rhabdomyosarcoma it's a life threatening soft tissue tumor of head neck and urogenital tract the image below on the right side you can see the rhabdomyosarcoma of the ocular muscles autoimmune connective tissue disorders rheumatoid arthritis the immune cells attack and inflame the membranes around the joints it can also affect the heart lungs and eyes the right side image you can see the portion of the knee which shows the bony erosion swollen inflamed synovial membrane cartilaginous wearing and tearing and reduced joint space jogren syndrome it's a progressive inability to secrete saliva and tears the symptoms include the dry eyes dry mouth sinusitis laryngitis interstitial lung disease digestive features problem like the dysphagia chronic gastritis acute pancreatitis scattered purpura lymphoma of the b cells cardiovascular problems like the raynaud's phenomenon and the valvular disease and the tubulo interstitial nephritis and synovitis now let us move on to the muscle tissue each muscle is made up of many long cylindrical fibers arranged in parallel arrays these fibers are composed of numerous fibrils called myofibrils in the image below you can see a muscle fiber having a sarcolemma and a matrix called the sarcoplasm in which the myofibrils are present and these myofibrils have striations muscle fibers contract when they contract they shorten in response to stimulation when they relax they lengthen and return to their uncontracted state in a coordinated fashion in general muscles play an active role in all the movements of the body muscles are of three types skeletal muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle on the right side you can see the contraction of the muscle and the relaxation of the muscle when the muscle relax it lengthens and narrows whereas in contraction it swells and shortens skeletal muscle tissue is closely attached to the bones in a typical muscle such as the biceps the striated or the striped skeletal muscle fibers are bundled together in a parallel fashion a sheath of tough connective tissue encloses the several bundles of the muscle fibers in the image on the right side you can see the tendon attached to the bone it has an outer covering called the epimysium inside the covering called the perimysium and you have the endomysium which is present within the bundles and you have the blood vessel passing through and you have a fascicle palmaris muscle is a long narrow muscle runs from the elbow to the wrist and is important for hanging and climbing in primates is missing in 11% of humans today in the image on the right side you can see the palmaris muscle starts from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and gets inserted into the fingers now smooth muscle fibers they taper at both ends they are fusiform in shape and do not show striations cell junctions hold them together and they are bundled together in a connective tissue sheath the walls of the internal organs such as the blood vessels stomach and the intestine contain this type of muscle tissue smooth muscles are involuntary muscles as their functions cannot be directly controlled unlike the smooth muscles skeletal muscles can be controlled by merely thinking cardiac muscle tissue is a contractile muscle present only in the heart cell junctions fuse the plasma membranes of the cardiac muscle cells and make them stick together communication junctions called the intercalated discs at some fusion points allow the cells to contract as a unit that is when one cell receives a signal to contract its neighbors are also contract together this is called syncytial contraction this image you can see the sum up of the muscle tissue left side above you can see the skeletal muscle tissue which has the nucleus and the striations on the right side you can see the fusiform shape of the smooth muscle fibers with the nucleus below you can see the cardiac muscle which has mild striations and intercalated discs for total contraction when you are looking at a slide of a tissue through the compound microscope and you see the striped branching cells that connect with each other what type of muscle are you weaving 
cardiac muscle tissue like the skeletal muscle tissue looks striated or striped and the bundles are branched like a tree but connected at both ends. Now let us move on to the neural tissue. Neural tissue exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing conditions. Neurons, the unit of neural system, are excitable cells. The neuroglial cells which constitute the rest of the neural system protect and support the neurons. Neuroglia makes up more than one half of the volume of the neural tissue in our body. When a neuron is suitably stimulated, an electrical disturbance is generated which swiftly travels along its plasma membrane. Arrival of the disturbance at the neuron's endings or output zone triggers events that may cause stimulation or inhibition of the adjacent neurons and other cells. Here in this image you can see the structure of the neuron which has a cell body with a nucleus and it has a long fiber like structure called the axon and there are large multiple branches called the dendrites. Neurons are surrounded by the supporting cells called the neuroglia. What are the diseases of the nervous system? Parkinson's disease. It's a degenerative disorder of the nervous system that affects the movement often including tremors. Alzheimer's disease, it's a chronic neurodegenerative disease which includes the symptoms of difficulty in remembering recent events, problems with language, disorientation and mood swings. What is biopsy? Biopsy is an examination of the tissue or liquid removed from a living body to discover the presence, cause or extent of a disease. Autopsy is a post-mortem or a dissection of a dead body examination to discover the cause of death or the extent of the disease. The field of forensic science effectively uses the histological techniques to trace out crimes. So today in tissue level of organization part 2 we discussed about the different types of connective tissue like the loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue and specialized connective tissue. So thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Kindly register for UG and PG NEET type MCQs in our website www.readmedprepacademy.com Our Facebook ID is readmedprepacademy Our email is readmedprepacademy at gmail.com Our Instagram is readmedprepacademy Kindly post your questions in the comment box We will reply with appropriate answers regarding the lecture To join Read Med Prep Academy, watch up the number given below Thank you very much